to check. One, two, one, two. I think my mic's loud enough. No, it's not close enough. So, gotta bring it. In. Boy, you guys are chatty. Look at all that chatty. I uh, I messaged uh, Kathy on Twitter. And she's, she's uh, kind of been overwhelmed with losing her job and everything. So that's why she hasn't been around. You can keep her in your prayers. Um, uh, it's just, she's got a lot going on with her, with her eyes and her headaches and everything like that. And then, um, yeah, you got two, two days of chat saved up. Um, I'm in standard tuning. Kind of. Close. There we go. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna tune together again. If you're already in dad yet, don't worry about it. But I think it's really good skill to have to be able to tune to change your tuning. You know, I'm trying to find a good thumb pick. I don't think Kathy's on. Uh, let me see. Who, who, who is on? What do we have here? Let's see. Um, so we're, uh, we're going to continue on dad gad stuff. We did some chords. We're going we're gonna to do uh, scales. Um, and, and, you know, it's funny. Just 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 because. <laughs> just because we're learning about dad gad. Um, and scales will help you with. And um, uh, uh, Vito mentioned this too about, you know, moving stuff around on top too with the drone D, the drop D thing, yeah, and, and um, the, the cool thing about Dadgad is that the, the top four strings is kind of like that G2 tuning um, that I was talking about where I would bend behind the slide, um, and so when you have that tuning, you could, if you just bar your finger, you're creating a, a, a two chord, whatever note this is, when I get there, I'll show you. Um, whatever note that is is what the root is. So this would be if this would be. And the nice thing is we're not changing the G string. So if you know the notes on your G string, then it'll work. So this would be a in in uh, Dadgad that would be a C two chord. But if you put your finger here, it would be C minor, and here it would be C major. So that's cool. So you can create major minor little triads up and down the the um, the guitar very easily. So I'll demonstrate that here in a second. Um, and then the other advantage to being able to, to the uh, I mean, the one thing you want to be able to do is uh, know some scales so you can create some melodies. Um, uh, but, you know, it's more about, with, with open tunings for me, it's more about fishing and just kind of finding things you like. And then the, the challenge is remembering it um, if you write something out. And, and when I write um, in open tunings, I always use tab only. So, you know me, I'm a big advocate for um, reading music, but when you're in an alternate tuning, you know, the music is going to be, it's just going to take you too long to adjust. Uh, but I think it was, uh, oh, Gary, I need to go and still hear that song. I keep forgetting. I found it and then <laughs> I got sidetracked. Okay, so let me see who's here. I got, we got Bonnie and Jim, of course, Bob, Dennis, uh, Ed. Good to see you, Ed. Um, let's see. Um... D oh, Diane's here. Okay. And they're all saying hi to each other. All right. Oh, my goodness. You guys are busy. Sorry. It's like you guys are. Um, let's see. Anyone else? Oh, Vito. I see you there. Good to be back. Hopefully, you'll be able to stay on. Uh, Jim Horst, good to see you. Uh, let's see. Oh, Bruce is here. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, first post on the the Cigar Box Guitar Build is up on Discord. I'll post a link, link to Discord here in a little bit, especially if I see some new names. Um, that always reminds me to do it. Roger, uh, good to see you. 
Let's see who else is here. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through. Uh, oh, Vito just had my tooth disc. Oh, that's right. No pain at all now. Good. Yeah, the the. Oh, that's awesome, dude. That's crazy. You just had one tooth extraction extracted. Um, the big thing is swelling, so they probably gave you some anti-swelling medication. That will make the pain go away a lot because if it, when it starts swelling is when it hurts. Keith is in the house. Uh... Oh, Gary, Gary's here. Moses is in the house. So Gary, I am gonna check out that song. I should do it right now live, uh, but that's all right. We'll I'll do it. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, Wen Ling, not too much, uh, not too much yakking, not enough information. I don't have time to waste. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what mic do you recommend for vocals or guitar? Uh, a, a lot of, um, th it, those are so very different kind of things. Um, uh, you can use a small uh, diaphragm condenser mic like a, a 451, which is a really good guitar mic, but you probably wouldn't want to use it on voice. For years, I used a AKG 414. Um, I felt like it was a really good, it, big, large diaphragm. It was a little on the brittle, on the bright side. A lot of times you'll see them on overheads for drums because they're good for cymbals and hi-hats. Uh, you wouldn't use them in a kick or anything like that, but they're really good for acoustic guitars or acoustic instruments and um, for, um, for vocals. I mean, not great for vocals. They're, like I said, they're a little brittle for vocals. Um, <laughs> So hopefully that helps you, Joseph, um, a little bit. And uh, Joseph, where are you? And Wen Ling, where are you at, if you're still there? A uh, sure, a uh, 50, uh, uh, SM7, uh, uh, oh, SM7, that's, a, that's, that's actually a pretty good mic for um, vocals. A lot of rock singers use it. Uh, my son's band, um, the Savannah Van Band, um, when they were recording um, uh, Kook, who uh, is the guy that introduced me to Justin Bieber, um, Kook Harrell is a vocal producer and Kook uses, you know, has access to any mic, uh, uses those Sony mics that are crazy looking, uh, the tube mics and, um, sorry, taking a sip cause I'm thirsty. All right. Um, but, uh, he, on, on Savannah, because it was like a rock sound, he, um, she, he used a, an SM7 on her voice and I've used SM7 on, uh, guitar cabinets. Uh, 57s are great for guitar cabinets. Royer, uh, you know, a 121, which is, you know, like a $1,200 microphone. Those are great, too. A lot of times people use both the Royer and the SM57 to get kind of the, the dark and the bright sound. So, um, anyway. So. <clears throat> oh, no, no. I uh, Bruce, I'm not saying the eye issue has resurfaced. I'm just saying that was a, it was a cumulative thing, a bunch of things she was dealing with. So. Um, I'm not, I'm not bringing you any new news. Uh, minor 11 dad gad. How to play a minor 11 chord in dad gad? Um, well, you could put, if you just put your third finger here, you would be a minor with a, with an add 11. Uh, but if you want a seventh in there, you probably do something like that. Uh, we're going to get there. So I'm going to, uh, tune. Um, we're going to tune the, the E string down to D. Okay, so now we're in drop D. Okay, so standard tuning is eat at Denny's, get bad eggs. Poor Denny's. Eat at Denny's, get bad eggs. Uh... Let's see, um, if, uh, let's see, well, and, and Funsum, I'll have more for you later, if you want, if you hang out. Um, so th that's standard tuning. I just dropped D, so we're, we're changing, um, ultimately changing the pitch of three of the strings for dad gad. So there's, right now we have dad and then G, B, E. Okay, so drop.
I don't know. It was some song I wrote in an airport once. Okay. So, you're welcome, Joseph. Okay. Now, the next change we're going to make, so we're going to leave these, and this is important to realize, um, the next three strings are going to be the same as they were. So the, the A, D, and G don't change. And what that, the re reason that's important is because it does give you kind of a, a way to at least center if you need to read some notes while you're tuned in dad gad and you know your fretboard well enough you can read in those positions uh, or in the, on those three strings if you're if you don't want to get too confused um, anyway uh, but it also allows you to like do this E shape can be moved up and you can play around with that and see what it sounds like things like that but the next uh, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top string down down to D as well And usually, like I said, I like to go down a little, a little below the note. Hey, David, good to see you. Um, elephants and dogs grow big ears. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one too, yeah. There's a million of them, actually. Um, well, personal trainers right now, uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis was asking, couldn't Kathy just be a personal trainer? And she probably could. Uh, right now, I imagine that, well, one-on-one -on -one is probably not prohibited but also the lockdown's been pretty severe in Michigan considering I you know I'm I used to spend every summer in Michigan so um, Michigan is one of those places where when the weather's nice people get out and do stuff I mean they are there are so many fun things to do in Michigan outside in the summer it's crazy it's a it's a beautiful state and most people don't ever go there because I mean they might go to Detroit if they have to but uh, you, it's surrounded by water, so you wouldn't drive through. Like, I'm from Indiana, so everybody's driven through Indiana and went, yeah, boring, and I'm like, yeah, right, I know. <laughs> but, you know, you got to drive through Indiana to go from L.A. to New York sometimes. Uh, but Michigan is one of those states you wouldn't drive through unless you were going maybe north, and even going north, you wouldn't make any sense. Um, so, uh, but it's as beautiful as all, it's just, it's very rural, and there's lots of farms and lots of trees and forests and dunes and, uh, sand dunes and beaches like 3,800. I think I read they have 3,800 miles of beach, so it's amazing. So uh, this is a is a uh, Martin D35 from the 70s. I think they, someone told me it's called a 35. The three stands for the three piece back, but I don't know if that's true. Um, okay, so now I'm in dr double drop D, and like I said, I like double drop D because it's a, it's uh, and the, this guitar set up low action, but. I can get I get power chords down here with a slide, and I've also got I got a kind of the top four strings is kind of like open G, so I got open D on the bottom and open G on top, so it's kind of fun. Yeah, not used to the thumping. Um, so so that's double double double. Let's see, drop. Double drop D or drop whatever. Yeah, double drop D is what I call it. Okay, the only one left now is we have the B string, and that's the second string. Oh, double, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Dennis, sorry. Uh, did you get my messenger message about that instrument? Oh, no, I did not. Let me check. I'll check it in a little bit. Um, so double drop D was this one, D-A-D-G-B-D. -D. And then, uh, let's see. Um, I touched my face, so that's a sipping infraction. That's the very first infraction. Every time that was our original drinking game. Um, uh, so we have a drinking game here. If I touch, there's ten ten rules. <laughs> Gary will post them, I'm sure, at some point. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> yeah, take a little sip. Uh, let's see. Um, so now we're gonna go to Dad Gad, which I don't really need to spell out because it's Dad Gad, and you know it. But anyway, so I'm gonna take that B string, and and I can if. You know, one thing you can do is hit the A string and get used to hearing octaves. That's a good skill to have. Right? And if you want to hear the actual pitch, you can hit the harmonic at the 12th fret of the A string. And those should be the same note. And I go down a little bit and come up to it. it kind of allows the string to settle a little bit more, I think. I feel like... The string doesn't want to be this loose for, for a minute. So if you go looser and then you come up, you trick the string into thinking, oh, okay, 
well, I'm not as loose as I thought I was, so I'll stay here. <laughs> that's, and, that's, and it actually works. Okay, so the, the, uh, if I touch my face, if I refer to myself in the third person, I forgot about that one. I haven't mentioned that one in a while, and I, I never do that. Um, if I, yes, if I change guitars, uh, take a sip. If I forget my tuning, so if I pick up my guitar and I don't realize it's in, a, in an odd tuning, then you get to take a sip. Um, if I use air quotes, um, if I said, if I say I had a band in high school called and then insert something there, um, and I haven't said that in a while, I may have to, I, you guys aren't saying anything funny. Um, so, um, okay. <laughs> they aren't they, it's anything weird. Uh, stay, uh, yeah, if I say that I played all the guitars in Apex Legends, which I did. Um, if I leave the room, that's a, a sip that it's just in, intended to fill space. Um, if I say there shall be no quiz at the end of the week on this, um, and I may say that today, uh, that's a celebratory sip. And then um, if I drop my pick, it's a sip. And if I drop a thumb pick, I think you should take two sips. So Because you really should never drop a thumb pick, and I did that the other day. Oh, hey, Joseph, you're in Brooklyn. Oh, my, uh, my niece is in Brooklyn. Actually, my niece and my... My, my sister's um, my sister's daughter is in Brooklyn and my wife's twin brother's son is in Queens uh, so works for uh, uh, DHL in Manhattan actually no I think he actually they're in the office in Queens um, okay so now we're in dad yet so that thing I was saying about the um, that Vito mentioned about having the drones on the bottom. <laughs> what my total number of bands I've had in high school probably I'm in over a thousand now over a thousand different bands I've probably been in a veto in high school um, so again if you know the notes on the G string and let's go over those for a second G second fret is A uh, B is a whole step away C is a half step away D is a whole step away E is a whole step away F is a half step and then G. Now, the other thing you could do is you could do all the notes in the key of D, for example. So D, uh, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G. You could do all the notes in the key of G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Um, we could do, uh, anyway, my point is, if you know what note you're playing on that string, then you'll know that this is a two chord. So this is a D note, and this is a D two chord. It sounds like uh, uh, who is that? An Australian band, right? Crowded House. I think a Crowded House. When I hear that D two chord. Oh, uh, somebody asked if I sell my guitar. Would I sell my guitar? Do you have any secondhand Martin to get guitar to sell? No, I do not sell guitars. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's exactly right. I've, I've regretted too many guitar sales. Okay, so what I was saying before, that if, I, if you put your second finger here, it kind of looks like a little D shape, right? That's a D minor chord now. Okay, so before we had D, E, and A. And who was it? Was it Bruce that pointed out... Um, Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll approve that. I don't know why that was... D David, you got... <laughs> oh, okay, so I had band names. Go Gobbledygook. Yeah, Gobbledygook. Yep, I had a band called Gobbledygook. Oh, okay, we got to get a sip now. Ah, there we go. Um, so... Um, but uh, I think Bruce mentioned something about, I think it was uh, Wednesday, somebody was asked a question and, and Bruce said, well, Tom knows the notes up and down and I, yeah. Even in open tunings, I'm pretty good at figuring it out, even if I have to think for a second. Um, and so that's a great place to be. Like I said, people ask me what's the most important thing to learn and I, I, I said, well, it depends on acoustic guitar or electric guitar. And if they say electric, I say, learn your fretboard. Know every note up and down your fretboard. That's a good start. And the great thing about that knowing that is once you know it you know it it's not a lifetime you know 
process. However, for acoustic guitar, I always say have as many strumming grooves as you can have uh, because that'll keep you from sounding boring. And that is, a, that is a lifelong pursuit. You can always learn new strumming grooves. There's always new grooves coming out. Every decade has a feel that's dominant in that decade oftentimes. Like a lot of, it was, in the 80s it was like, a lot of eighth notes kind of stuff, right? The swing was in the 50s. No, but there's a band name that, similar to Jabberwocky, David. Uh, what is a good theory or method to name a band? <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. Um, so, but so so this was D, E, and A, and so this was the root, second, and fifth, and so this, if I take that E up to F, then it becomes D minor, D F A, right? So there's our little minor triad. Minor sounds bad underneath the, with a D. E. But if I go up one more fret on that, I get D major. So I'm playing D on top, B minor. See, because that's a B note and this is a minor shape. G, G string. And all of these you can hammer on. So that's that's kind of a, you know, to, to bring uh, to bring Avito's point into from uh, Wednesday into today. So um, so I was you know, I didn't even, I, I, so I did a video on uh, scales in open D, um, and I mean, yeah, and dad, yeah, sorry, uh, let's see, tuning notes, and so basically it's what I'm, we're going to, what, okay, no playlist now, the heck, all right. That's weird. It's like I spelled it wrong or something. Um, let's see. Chords and some phone chords. Oh, fun scales and dad gag. Here we go. 15 minute lesson. And I'm going to turn it into an hour lesson. <laughs> All right. So here's that lesson. It's, it's, well, it's got 76,000. No, I'm sorry. 6,000 views. Yeah, not. Hardly any views. Okay. Uh, I'm uh, I'm assuming the new standard tuning is is a micro adjustment. David. I'm not aware. I mean, maybe I've done new standard tuning without knowing it. What is that? As I tune here. So the, the, the thing about the, the tuning, um, there's not a lot of symmetry here. The, the good thing is, I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag as far as the... Um, G, C, G, so it's C, G, D, A, E, G. I've never heard that. Huh. It's an interesting tuning. Um, so, remember, we've only got three different pitches represented here. We have three D strings, we have two A strings, and we have one G string. So, 
anything we do on the bottom string, we can do on the fourth string and we can do on the fifth string, but it may not work out as far as the playing an open scale goes, okay? So we're, I'm only gonna do open scales, scales in open positions. So we're gonna have open strings. Um, and we're gonna use every open string we can. So with pentatonics, it may mean actually uh, playing just like, for example, on a pen, even on a major scale, you're gonna be going uh, G to A because they're, they're, they're uh, neighboring tones in a scale. So you're gonna, it's gonna be some interesting fingerings. Um, for example, is the G scale. And so I only I only played one note on I only played the open G I didn't play anything else on the on the G. So it's like you're playing three notes, one, three notes. So three notes, one note, three notes, and then here you can go as high as you want. Robert, so Robert Fripp's a genius, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's it's crazy though. Uh, yeah, so G C D A. So the E. So that string would be really high G. So that would give you a much greater range. So it's it's oh I see it's all fifths except the top string. Yeah. You could almost go with a five string guitar and you would have a greater, with a tune to fifths, and you would have a greater range than a normal guitar, which is pretty crazy. It's amazing what, just changing that. So that's, and that's a great point to make is that the intervals we have here are what's gonna create this kind of odd layout for these scales. Um, we have the first interval is a perfect fifth and then we have a fourth and we have another fourth and we have a second and then we have another fourth. So it's not, Standard guitar tuning is almost all fourths with one major third in it. So that, that means things can be somewhat symmetrical. They're not nearly as symmetrical as violin, which is tuned in fifths. Um, and so that makes everything really, really symmetrical. Uh, guitar, you do have to make like little notch outs to jump down and get a note sometimes, which is kind of frustrating. But once you have it, the great thing about guitar is that if you have a, um, a scale on the you know, that uses no open strings, it's completely movable. So you technically have 12 scales. Same thing with a, um, a, a two chord, I mean, uh, sorry, with, a, with chords, if it's a bar chord and you can play it, uh, if it uses no open strings, then um, you've got 12 chords. Uh, somebody earlier asked me about a, like a minor seven, I mean, a seven eleven. Uh, so this is, that's a D minor at 11. Uh, to make it a 7-Eleven, probably you would, you would want to add the, the C. So you could do that. And if you want, you could add a ninth. Uh, ninth. So that's kind of cool. And it's technically movable if you want. It's a really pretty chord, though. Um, so that would be, I'm going to type it in just so you have it. Uh, D, let's see. Dun, 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 D, zero, zero, three. Zero, three, two, is that right? And that was D, so let me see, D, A, F, G, oh wait, what is, oh yeah, yeah, C, and then the top one was E, E. So that's not a, not a wasted note there, that's D minor 11. Uh, that actually has every note in it from, um, Yeah, 7-Eleven chord uh, would be no ninth. I put a ninth in there, so there's a ninth in there. So this is pure. This is purely a, a D minor 11. And D minor 11, remember we when we talked about triad music theory, we talked about chord theory, uh, we have root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh. We have six notes and we have six strings. If we... Um, if we added the 13th, we'd have seven notes. We can't play that on guitar unless you want to whistle that seventh note. So, but. so then if you were to play that, those notes with these three fingers, now you technically, that's not, not easy, but it, you could probably play. I've never, 
I've never played that before. I'm just messing around. So, um, okay. So the way I play the major skip. Um, so we'll start out with the first octave. Let's learn the first octave. We'll, then we'll learn the top octave, and then we'll put the two together, okay? So we're going to start out open. Oh, I need to move. Let's see if I go like this maybe a little bit. Move the mic a little bit. I'm just trying to make sure you can see my hands, okay? Um, um, so we're going to start with open E string, or D string. Uh, open, and then second fret with your first finger. Fourth fret with your third finger and fifth fret with your pinky. Okay, and so there's the that's the first tetrachord, right? Except that we're not playing it all at once. So, um, so there's the first four notes, and then we have four more to go. The next string open A. Second fret with the first finger and fourth fret with the third finger, and then hit the D string. So, so we have. Now, um, uh, let's do the next octave. So we'll start with the open D string, and we're not going to do the. Even though we have the same, we have three D strings. We're not going to do the same thing on this D string that we did on the bottom D string because we have a G, G note right here. So we want to use open strings. I could, but then I'd have to skip a string. We don't want to do that. I want to actually use the G, uh, the open G string. So here we go. Oh, uh, fourth string open, first finger on the second fret, third finger on the fourth fret, open G string, open A string, second string, fir uh, first finger on the second fret, third finger on the fourth fret, and open E string. That's weird. Try it. Now, here's one trick, too, is you really want to try to keep that alternating picking going, even though you're kind of almost doing a sweep. Technically, from this F sharp right here, you're, you're playing three strings in a row. Okay? You're playing the fourth string, the third string, and the second string. So weird. not been typing so I'm assuming I've got 41 current viewers right now I'm assuming you're actually playing hopefully you're playing <laughs> I can strum for you so you can solo using those scales uh, let's see do I have a blank no oh, that stand set up for my ood it's really short um, let me uh, 
we haven't been changing guitars much in this less these lessons because I only have you know I don't want to tune everything to open D. Uh, let me print up a thing I can write some of these chord shapes down. I mean scale shapes down. Okay, uh, live stream stuff. Let's see. Boom boom Yeah, this will do. Print. So we're gonna do the paper and pen thing. I didn't get around to. Um, but this will work because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six frets. That's weird. Print. I still haven't found that banjo book. I I was just messing with it, so it's got to be around here somewhere. It's so funny. It's like what? It's not my normal stack of stuff. This is this is the bluegrass one. Um, I got my pens. Uh, I've got crazy. We got a lot, a lot of stuff. We've done. <laughs> we've done a lot of stuff in the last seventy days or so. Ten weeks of of. Uh, uh, let's see. What do I want to do? Let's see if this looks good. So the D major one, I, so I can, I'm going to write, see, I'm just using these diagrams. I'm going to write zeros across the top, okay, because every string is going to be open. And then we got this. Okay, and then, so if you want to do a screenshot of that, that's D, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, wait, Tom, <laughs> that's D major. Okay, that's a D major scale right there. Okay, I, I'll write out a D. Uh, I'll do uh, since we're really this also I'll, I'll try to tie into this a little bit of. Now you can also if you want to continue on, um, you can do these notes here. Okay, on the top string, totally good to know. And you see, it just it just parrots uh, the bottom string, but. Um, what I want to do is I'll, I can I can do scales that are we can kind of change them a little bit and go oh yeah D major the only change is we got to take the C sharps down to C I can feel it in my eye I don't smoke um, never really have but occasionally um, I will smoke my pipe on my grandfather's pipes because it just makes the house smell so good you know it makes my house smell like the grandparents house, especially if you go out and then come back in, it's like, oh, it smells like grandma and grandpa. <laughs> so, um, and uh, the, um, uh, so, but last night Alex was over and, and I wanted to celebrate his birthday. We, we both lit up pipes. Uh, I smoked my pipe that I got in Amsterdam. He smoked his pipe that he got in uh, Prague. And then uh, we drank some of this, uh, Super expensive bourbon. <laughs> Had a glass of that. So we was feeling, feeling like freaking C.S. Lewis sitting out there drinking bourbon. Well, he wouldn't drink. What would he drink? It was uh, not bourbon, but he smoked a pipe. and uh, So it was pretty, pretty fun. Where are we? Oh, hey, Leo. So we're learning um, scales in open or dad dad scales. Okay. Okay. So the difference between D major and D mixolydian is that... And I think it'll be cool because you'll be able to really see it here. D mixolydian. Um, Lydian. Really one word. Uh, is, and again, all open strings. I'm going to try to do all scales, with, use the open strings. The only one that I can think of right now that won't use an open string would be, uh, if we did Lydian. Um, but also, believe it or not, um, D major pentatonic, you, we're going to have to skip the G string. So you're going to play the D, the D string and you're going to go over the D string and skip to, to be a pure pentatonic. Okay. Yep. Get, get to it, Leo. Um, okay. So the, the, the C sharps are right here on the A string, A, B, and C sharp. And here on this A string, which used to be your B string, A, B and C sharp. So we're going to take both those C sharps down a fret to here, to the third fret, 
and we're gonna get, and that's all we're gonna do. So both those notes are gonna go down. So you'll see it. This is the cool thing about it. You can see, is you, you got a, a visual record of the difference between D major and D mixolydian. It's really just one note. See that? And I'll play it here in a second. Hopefully my brain's not gonna explode. And I'll scan this. I, just, I was supposed to scan something else too, wasn't I? Uh, what was I supposed to scan? I'm losing track of everything. Nope, not. Uh, anyway. Okay. Not this. Or was that? Did I scan the hip hop groove? I don't remember. Okay. So here's that scale. Oh, I did do the hip hop group, I'm pretty sure. So here we go. The it's gonna be open. That's good like a that's a good scale to play over a D7 chord. Okay, so you know. and it's it's also the G chord. It's a, a G scale. So it's the exact same notes. G, D mixolydian is this is a, is is um, relative to G major, meaning they have the same key signature. Okay, so open bottom string open, same thing we did before. Second fret with the first finger, third fr uh, fourth fret with the third finger, and fifth fret with the pinky. Okay, then we're gonna go on the A string. We're gonna hit open. Second fret with the first finger and third fret with the second finger. Okay. And just hit that open D string. So G, the major one had that leading tone. Da, da, that's called leading tone. Because it leads to the next note. Hey, Pepper's here. No, uh, I'm not wearing pants. These are just painted on. Okay. Um, my wife and I have really gotten into body painting. <laughs> it's, it's wrong. I love saying stuff like that around the kids, though. I don't know if any of you have kids that are like teenagers or in their 20s. It's really fun to mess with them that way. Okay. <laughs> Alex is probably watching right now going, oh, dad. <laughs> All right. So uh, open. So we have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. Okay. And then we're going to go. On the D string, we're going to go open, second fret with the first finger, thir uh, third finger on the fourth fret, open G string, then skip, go right to the B A string, the second string, and then second fret and third fret, and then open D. Again, that the G up here, you can really make it sound, sound like a G scale. Because a G scale is just a D mixolydian scale starting on G. <laughs> I mean, we learned that with the mode stuff back in lesson 13. Yeah, so the tuning we're doing... Um, no, Margaret, I can wait for you. <laughs> there you go, Margaret. Uh, this is D. If you have a tuner out, you can do it pretty quick. A. You might want to mute me while you do it, because otherwise that... Um, yeah, just three three lessons back. We're on lesson three as far as, as, far as this goes. Okay. Um, and so... Okay, so we're, go back to the D major scale. Here it is. I wrote both of them out, but go back to that first one, okay? I'm going to show you some application here. Sorry, is my finger covered? No, okay. And, I, and I'll, I'll scan it, and put it in the the uh, Discord. Um, there, I, I'll send a link. How many? Hey, Dennis, how many people do we have that have joined the Discord thing? Do you know? Uh, 
Um, I'm getting an invite link for anyone who wants to join. Copy. There it is. Uh oh, we're falling off. We're losing. We're losing customers. Okay. So, but like, if you know the scale tones. You can start messing around with those. And you can even mess around with the bass notes. Don't dream it's over. That just sounds like that. That oh, that D two chord just sounds like. Uh, don't dream it's over. Um, so. So yeah. So when you start to learn those, now let's. I'll play do the the D mixolydian. So I'll flatten those C sharps down to C. That's a totally different sound. Not minor yet though. I mean, this note almost, you're going to have to gravitate towards that quite a bit, this A, so that the G doesn't ring out too much. Uh, this way, if you go like this, you got D, A, D, A, A, D, D, A, D, A, A, D. So you, now this is just dad, dad. It's all dad, 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 dad. It's just dad, 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 dad. Okay. Um, so then you can do, you know, and if you use your first finger on that, you still got two other fingers or three other fingers you can So, all right. Uh, yeah, it just dropped down. I'm not sure, but that, you know, it happens. Uh, okay, probably people are tuning in and going, I don't want to learn about Dad Gad. I'm touching my face so we can all take a sip. Maybe they're leaving because I wasn't doing enough to, to uh, merit a sip. Tom doesn't, Tom doesn't like it when people leave. Okay, um, so now what we can do is we can take that D mixolydian scale, okay, and we have because we have three D strings, we're gonna we have three F sharps. Okay, here's the D mixolydian scale. If we take those F sharps down to F, we're gonna create a D a D Dorian scale. So we have D E F G A B C, which D Dorian is relative to um, relative to C major. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now on here. I'm use my guitar desk. I should market these. <laughs> Sell guitars as lap desks. Ah, boy, it's really hard to write with a thumb pick on. Okay, so this will be D Dorian. And again, all the strings are going to be open. We're going to use all the open strings. You have D, E, F, A, that's E. G, we want G, B, C, F, G, A, B, C, and then 
I mean, the reason I'm making these hollow circle or just zeros instead of filled in circles, but you can see it looks kind of symmetrical, this last one right here. And the reason I'm doing this where I'm on the E string, the reason I'm writing all circles is because technically from, from the bottom note to the open top note, that's two octaves. And then beyond that would be all notes that are in the key still, but beyond two octaves. So that's all. I could fill those in. You can fill them in. You don't need to leave them empty like that. Okay, that makes sense. I'll do it so you can do a screenshot without my face in there. And now I can touch my face all I want. You can't see. <laughs> Memories like the corners of our mind. Misty, wanna, da, 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 I don't know the words. <laughs> I love doing that. I also like doing this. Fun with OBS <laughs> or OCD, <laughs> same thing. All right, <laughs> you guys are like, Australia, you're crazy. Okay, so here's what that D Dorian sounds like. <laughs> Ironic that we actually don't play the A note on this string yet. Yet we do tend. I do tend to gravitate towards that. All right. So let's play. Let's do the bottom octave first. So open, bottom string, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, and that's the first tetrachord. That's weird that you two messes up on PCs. Hey, Jan. Good to see you. So we're in dad dad right now, okay? And we're, we're, I'm teaching scales and, you know, D scales in dad dad. Okay, then the next three, four notes are open A string, second fret, third fret, and an open D string. I mean, to, to, to ingrain scales more deeply into my head and into my hands, I like to do groupings uh, just to kind of warm up sometimes. So it's, it's, when it's a new scale, it's often very hard. So, um, uh, so I'm, I'm going to, um, so if I do like groupings of three, it would sound like this. So I go up three notes and then go back one and start on that one and go three notes from that one. I don't put a pause. I try not to put a pause between them. So So that was just groupings of three, you could do groupings of four. I have to think about it. Wow. That's cool. It's so weird, but it's cool. So D Dorian again is 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 um, basically C. There's no good way to play C chord in Dad Gad. That's how you play C C chord in Dad Gad. <laughs> I'm gonna write that out because I'm mean. <laughs> so um, oh Leo question. Sorry uh, question. Can we? Um, 
Can we trans? So Leo's asking, can we transpose any song to Dad Gad based on chord grades? Yes. Um, I, I that's that video I did um, that talks about that. Play most any song in Dad Gad. I'll, I'll put a, I'll post a link right here. Um, talks about that. Um, the only thing is, you know, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice things, but if you want to do an arrangement of a song, um, why not make it different than the original? So if the original was not in Dadgad, um, then um, you're going to create a new sound for that song, okay? Uh, play most any song. People hate that I use the term most. Um, so here's that. Boom, boom. And um, so it's just a matter of... There's a couple things. It, 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 we talked about this uh, a little bit on Wednesday. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of I got a lot of thumbs down on this one. <laughs> it's funny. So uh, yeah, a lot of thumbs down on this one because people are like, "You don't know anything." Um, Okay, so some people actually may be here because of this video. Um, but basically, you, 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 what will sound best is like, I, like I, for example, every breath you take is, uh, if you analyze it, it's a one, it's a basically a one, six, four, five progression, kind of a 50s uh, progression, right? Um, and, uh, you know, it's, a, in, it's an A flat, so here we have D, E, F, G, A, there's A flat. Right. Um, so obviously, A flat's not going to be the best key for Dad Gad. But if you put the song in in Dad Gad, um, if you were to do the, you know, it might be a better key for you anyway. So yeah, you can, um, if you can simplify or, or t break down the chord progression into a one, four, five, or, you know, into Nashville numbering system, break it down into, uh, chords and we can, we should do a video on that. I could do, um, we could take a couple songs and, and break them down, but you guys have been, we've been doing this all along, like throughout all of these lessons, I've been talking about this. Um, so once you do that, then you can transpose it and just make the D is the new one chord, and you know B minor is the new. So now you have, now you need to know where is D on the you know B minor, G and A. So yeah, you can totally do that. Now as far as um, we talked about this also on because I guess you weren't there. Is it good to use the same guitar switching thing back tunings back? Sure, you know I, I I've never had a problem with a guitar um, going back and forth between tunings. I mean if you use some radical tunings like if you do went to open C where you're really lowering the strings down or whatever or raising them, you might want to have strings specifically for that setting tuning, which means you might also want to have a guitar specifically for that tuning if you are going to be uh, playing that tuning a lot. However, if it's just for one song, uh, then you may just have to suffer through the... Um, uh, yeah, Dad Gad is great that way. Open C is really cool too. Um, but, you know, you, you might have, like with open C, your low E string is going to go all the way down to C. It's going to be a little pitchy. When you try to play that F note right here, it's maybe, it may be a little sharp or a little flat or something because you, the string is so loose. Um, so, so the answer to that question is, yes, you can change tunings on, and, on guitar. Go from one thing, uh, we talked about this the other day, though. If you're changing tunings for every song, it might make your performance a little on the boring side. I mean, I would tend to do something where, because you're stopping, you know, to tune every song. <laughs> so you got to remember to keep your, uh, yeah, strings will feel like spaghetti, exactly, Jim, if they're too loose. You got to remember to kind of put yourself in your audience's seat in their chair and see, you know, what, what are they seeing? How are they experiencing your show or your performance? And um, you really want to, you want to cater to that. We're, we're entertainers. It's simple as that. Um, so, you know, the, the, the couple solutions, yeah, you could have a 
to cut back on that, you could have a guitar with every tuning ready to go. So, you, you know, if you're doing a 10 song set, you could have 10 guitars on stage <laughs> and that would be a pain. Plus, they probably won't stay in tune anyway. Or it'd be cheaper, cheaper than owning 10 really high quality guitars would be owning two and having a guitar tech with you at every show. That would be cheaper for a very long time. You could do a lot of shows. And I think that's even cooler to have a guy handing you a guitar that's tuned for this specific song just as soon as you finish the last song. That's cooler than having 10 guitars on stage, in my opinion. So, uh, but yeah, you can totally change. There's no reason you can't. Now, what I might do is, let's say, um, I was doing a set of acoustic stuff, um, and not that I've ever done this. Uh, I, mean, I have done stuff like I mean, I've done a lot of classical stuff like that, but it was steel string. I've done a little bit of that, I think. Uh, but let's say I, I had a song in Dad Gad, and then I had another song uh, that was in Dad Gad, but Capo 3, you know? Now I might have to tune it a little bit. That's a little out of tune. That was really sharp. Oh, you know what? I'll use the G7 because the G7 works better for. You can just there. Yeah, it should be good. Yep. Yeah, G7 is great that way because the, the the shove is adjustable and sometimes it, I had to adjust it too tight and it was like bending everything sharp. So, um, so that's a G7 capo. If you've not seen one of those. They actually want to interview me. I got to check my messages because they, they message me and they're in Australia. So I mess, they message me and then I get it like 18 hours later and then I message them and then <laughs> they get it like 18 hours later. It takes forever to have a conversation with these guys. Uh, but yeah, the nice thing about G7 is you just kind of squeeze it out tight. You need it and it stays like that. <laughs> I just saw though, I entered G7, went to Google and I entered G7 capo and it... <laughs> It, the it auto filled and like the second auto fill was stuck and I went oh my gosh that could totally happen where you, you clamp this on and then this release thing doesn't work anymore it breaks and so now how do you get the capo off I'm sure that this plastic cap pops off and there's a release or something that's probably that's probably built into it I'll have to ask them though um, but um, so anyway, that kind of answers your question, and I just took, what, like 25 minutes to do it? <laughs> did I mention that um, I did all the guitars on Apex Legends? <laughs> My, your wife. You know, Ed, your wife wants me to continue with seven-day lessons. So what other scales can we do? Well, we're at D Dorian. The difference between D Dorian and D minor, instead of a B, we would have a B flat. Well, where are the Bs? The Bs are here and here. So we're going to lower those. Now we're going to go down to the first fret for the first time. So that's kind of cool. So I'm going to use my guitar desk. My $4,000 guitar desk. No, it's not $4,000 guitar. Glug. <clears throat> I'm going to write out, I'm going to copy uh, see, all open strings. And this is pure D minor. D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. I have to think. You guys are making me think. Bruce, I mean, not, no, it was Ed. Ed, if I taught every day, what would I teach on? I'm running out of things to talk about. You all are laughing right now. You're like, that's not true. <laughs> I'm going to mess up here. I keep putting down these these pens right next to each other, and then I can't find the one I want. So I'm going to put the ones I'm not using over here. Okay, so this is D minor. Oh, Phrygian works too. We can do D Phrygian. So we'll do D Phrygian because all we got to do is make one change. So look at this, third, this one over here, the D Dorian. Okay. And notice on the uh, A string uh, here, let's see if I can point to it. Dang it. There we go. There and here, those Bs went down to B flats. See, it looks weird, doesn't it? It's not as symmetrical as the other ones have been. Particularly the major and the, and the, the, uh, the Dorian are very symmetrical, you know. So here's what this one sounds like and looks like. And very, very cool. I mean, I just, just putting your first finger on that B flat and hitting the top five strings, it's just magical. <laughs> That's just 
freaking awesome, right? Okay, so we have... I mean, part of the thing about doing these lessons, though, is I, the best way to learn something is to teach it. And so essentially what I'm doing is I'm just learning this stuff right now. I'm not too... Hey, you're not paying me money, so... You're not paying me anything, so all of a sudden somebody puts money in there. That wasn't a tacit, you know, that wasn't a, a, a hit up there, but. It's kind of hard because you gotta, you gotta get this G on the on the fifth fret on the bottom string, and then you gotta, you know, get, get this B flat on the first fret. So you do have a little bit of a movement, but you have an open string in the meantime. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I am using felt tip. Yeah, I yeah, you know what? I, if I was using, I wouldn't have done it if I was using, um, or I would have put the pad down. All right, so. Um, so we have the we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just do the first octave to start and then the second octave. So we have open D string and bottom string, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, open, first fret, third fret, open. Let's do that again. Open, two, three. Uh, low Korean won't work. And, and Lydian, we, we'd have to change. I could do Lydian. Uh, low Korean, we have the A strings. And we uh, too many A flats. It just be it, there's no no point in doing it. It'd be too yeah. I'd be like yeah, it's, nah. there's no reason to do low Korean. But we we could do Lydian. Lydian's a beautiful scale, and we only have the one G, so so we can easily take that up there if we have to. So okay, um, so I can do Lydian. Um, my after after I do Phrygian though because. <laughs> I've got a I've got a theme going here where we're only changing one note for each of these new scales, which is really cool to see how closely related these scales are, and how far they are once you get the from you know D major when we get to D Phrygian, you, there's very little in common. So, but so far all of them have these notes in common, which is why why I'm showing you these voice these scales. Open second. Five, open, first, third, open, open, third, first, open, five, three, two, open. Okay, next string. Open D string, open, second fret, third fret, open G string, open B, A string, first fret, third, open, open D string, and if you want to continue, go second fret, third fret, fifth fret. So weird. So I'm playing three notes on this string, one note on this string, three notes on this, and one note on that. So it's like the uh, it's like the Frank and Bali per, uh, pentatonic scales. Uh, that he he voices the way he voices. Well, not all the time, I don't think, but he, he I've seen him do it, and he t taught a lesson on it. But uh, he voices pentatonic scales like really weird, so that you can do sweeps. He's really into sweeping. So um, anyway, that's a whole nother lesson. Okay, so we descending, we can start here, open D string on the next second string, third fret, first fret, open, G string open, third fret on the fourth string, second fret, open, third fret, first fret, open, fifth fret, second or third fret, second fret, open. Okay.
I'm just messing around in, in essentially what's D minor scale. Okay, so now if we take all those E's, and there's three of them here, uh, all the notes, all the notes on the second fret, if we take those down to the first fret, we take those E's to E flat and we create what is a D Phrygian scale, which is relative to the key of, help me here, uh, B flat. Okay, so again, still all the strings, we can use all the open strings, which is dope. I'm gonna to have to remember not to do that when we do the Lydian scale. But we're really gonna have, I'll write out all six modes here, and we haven't even touched pentatonic scales. Maybe that, maybe that allows me, gives me an idea for the next lesson, right? Um, so maybe carry that over. So the D Phrygian, P, H, R, Y, G, I, A, N. Um, it's going to be first fret on the bottom, then C, E flat, F, G, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, E flat, C. And then finish it off like this. Okay. So you get ready with your screen cap if you want. Don't really have to, but you can. This one's, we're getting back to symmetry. Look at that. It's a lot more symmetrical. So it's this one here. Um, hopefully you can see that. Boom. All right. So what does that sound like? Well, Phrygian, it's weird because it's got that E flat. It's a very Lydian if you just play that. It sounds like an F of E flat Lydian. I'm sorry, I'm missing something here. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> changes it all. Yeah. Yeah, Lydian's. No, let's see. Uh, let's see. I like using pencil when I draw. Okay. Sounds medieval. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, minor. D, yeah. But yeah, Phrygian, even more so. drift out of the I apologize so that you know we got still got that B flat thing going on so if you played like one one zero 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 that would be like a E flat B flat D G A D kind of an E flat Lydian you know, E flat major seven, E flat major seven, sharp eleven. Boom. How fun is that? Tom's a genius. <laughs> you need to make it. Uh, let's see. All right. Yes, I am a genius. I'm a legend in my spare time. Um, let's see. All right. So those, those, now, we, uh, in this, for a veto, if you're still here, I'll do, I'll, we'll do a, um, a Lydian. Lydian's going to be a little weird because we're going to, we're going to have to 
get out all the way up to the sixth fret. And uh, D Lydian would be relative to A, the key of A major, so three sharps. So D major has two sharps, which is F sharp and C sharp, but Lit D Lydian has a third sharp, which is G sharp. Uh, well, I'll use my desk. What did I do? Did I touch my face? I didn't put down a guitar. I mean, I didn't change guitars. <laughs> oh, I'm a legend in my spare time. This is, this is, I didn't say Tom is a legend in his spare time. You guys are, you guys are sip, sip crazy. All right. So, I, okay, so I'm not going to do open G string here. All right, uh, D Lydian. All right, and then, so this one, well, it's a good thing I got this. I just happened to print up a, a six, six fret uh, diagram chart. Look at that. I'm going to need it. I didn't think I was, and I'm like, oh, that worked out. And if you want, you can go to the A up there. So I actually needed seven frets for this one. But okay, so there's the Lydian one, I hope. Well, I'll know it when I play it. Okay, so I know this isn't great. I'll scan it and put post it to Discord. Uh, Discord. What's it? What, what are nails on a chalkboard? Did I do? Oh, oh, is that sound of me writing on the guitar? <laughs> nails on a chalkboard, do you? Um, okay. I had a band in high school called Males on a Chalkboard. M-A-L-E-S on a Chalkboard. All right, so let's see. Oh, I don't need to do anything. I just need to play the dumb scale. Okay, so we're in A. Sounds like an A chord there. Okay. Uh, That's you can hear the lidding. So the major would be this. Oops. And the lidding is. Right? It's a it, lidding it always sounds like a TV, a movie score. Making the D major chord here, zero zero. Happy to write a bunch. Of That's D major, but if I go zero zero two four, that kind of create a D Lydian sound. And the cool thing about it is one one of the beautiful things to take advantage of in the Lydian thing is that that four fourth and fifth, the G sharp and the A. Remember D E F sharp is one two three, and the four is. G sharp, no quiz on this, don't worry about it. And then A, and you can do something like this. It's like, whoa, that's super duper Lydian sounding. Hard to get that G note on the bottom. Oh, you don't want G, because we have G sharp, so yeah, it wouldn't work anyway. So we have E, E major. drag about the, the whole Lydian thing is you really you can't just you can't bang out all the strings uh, because if you hit that G it'll take it away from that G sharp so it's like you got to use the use the spider cape up <laughs> right right if you don't I haven't seen a veto in a while is he there hey greetings hook so we just put the spider capo on still have to still have to learn all the find all the G sharps up and down the fretboard but so there, 
So now I'm tuned in. <laughs> Dad Gasharp gish ad. ad. Go for it, eat pepper. I have I, all I've had is a power bar today, so I've got to get something to eat too here in a minute. So yeah, that's called a spider spider capo. Um, I love this thing. I have a bunch of them because sometimes I use two. Um, I've written songs with them, um, a lot of songs with them actually. Okay. All right, so um, while I'm thinking of it, I'll scan this and post it to Discord while we talk. All right. Um, so, so how's everyone doing? Uh, I should have put the names of those chords there. Sorry about that. Well, that first one's D and that one, other one's D with a G sharp in it, but okay. So I need to scan. And so I'm going to scan that and post it in the Discord. Um, and our scan. Boom, scan. So these are the diatonic scales in Dadgad. So that's what I'll call this sheet. And we'll, um, I'll post it. And then, so Monday we'll do, um, we, we will do some uh, pentatonic scales. Maybe talk a little bit about writing in Dadgad. Um, you know, that's kind of up to you, and and um, it's just kind of it's just fun to play in. It's just different. Um, don't know what, what we're going to talk about next. I mean, there's a you know again a million things. Uh, I should. I need to. I need to try to formulate my beginner um, plan. Let's see. Save as PDF. Okay. Um, uh, di diatonic scales in Dadgad. All right, and I'm, as soon as I uh, upload this, I'll post another link to the um, to the Discord site. I think I think everyone's um, yeah. I, I I don't. What's negative harmony? <laughs> Probably know what it is, but don't know the name of it. Uh, are you going to make me Google that right now? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Clear this. Yes. Okay. Quit. All right. So I'm going to Discord. Um, where are you, Discord? Okay. Uh, Tom's bookmarks? Is that where? Yeah, that's where I put stuff. Um, all right. So let me go here. Um, live stream stuff. Okay. So this is what I, it's, it's there. All right, so uh, here's the link for the Discord. If you're new. I mean, I, I could, I could do, I, I, one of my favorite lessons to teach is on combinatorics, um, which, um, I actually just kind of, when I originally taught it, I just kind of winged it. I was teaching a clinic in um, in the high desert. Um, I can't, I wouldn't, what's the name of that town? I always say Lancaster, but it's not Lancaster. It's further east than that. It's on the way to Vegas. Uh, sorry, my eye itches because, like I said, I was smoking pipe yesterday and got a lot of smoke in my eye. So it's kind of annoying. Whew. All right, touch my face so we can... That's definitely touching your face because that's your eyes. You're not supposed to touch your eyes. In fact, I didn't wash my hands after getting back from the store, but I also walked like three miles afterwards or two, a couple miles afterwards. Let's see. Um, uh, 
Uh, see, create the chords for scales in Dadgad. Just a thought. Well, I did. I did chords in Dadgad um, a couple days ago. So if you go back one video, you could probably get some chords for Dadgad. Um, uh, let's see. Changing guitar strings. Interesting. I, I would. You know what I would love to do is is. Uh, um, I would love to um, have my guitar tech talk about that because <laughs> cause I, I always love when I get new, when I take my guitar in and I get it back. It's like everything looks so pretty, but when I put strings on it, never. Um, it's it just depends. Right, now um, there's so many great videos on that, Margaret. Um, do you what are you acoustic guitar? I'm assuming, right? Sorry, Mike. I got to shave. It's like getting right on my lips. It bothers me. So take a sip. Mm -hmm. um, Rosa Stringworks method. You wrap the a post a couple times before you thread it through. I find it easier to do. Huh. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I, I, I've just, I'm usually watching TV when I'm changing strings, so I just, um, and it's fairly clean. I tend to gravitate towards having too much string around, especially on the high two strings, uh, too much string on there. So it gets a little ugly. Right now it looks pretty good though. I, I must've done a fairly, I, these are new. I just put these on. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tough. It, it helps to have the right tools. Um, you, you know, a couple things you might need are one thing for sure is a guitar winder string winder and not because you can't turn a knob yourself the main reason for it is for that little cutout right there that helps you pull the pins out so you use this thing to you use this thing to pull the pins out once you loosen the string so um, but this helps you loosen the string really fast it kind of change it speeds everything up some people have it on a drill um, you know they have one of these like they, they can use a drill on my guitar tech has that um, but but uh, but I'm fine with something like this. It's totally fine. I think they have some. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of them. I have a Fender one too. I have. I think I have the first one I had as a kid still. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, so the other thing is. Oh. <laughs> See that shaker? Actually, it was given to me by uh, the one we play. I, I did a uh, went up to Sacramento to do some concerts for some kids. What's funny is if you put the shaker in your hand and strum. Oh shoot! <laughs> All right, everybody, take a sip. I forgot I was in dad cat. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> All right, put it in your hand. Then you. They make a good, they make a guitar pick with a shaker on it, but that's completely ridiculous and non-usable. Because because the pick the pick is way too close to the shaker and really hard to hold. This is. Uh, um, uh, this I just keep it in the palm of my hand and then I just strum with a pick like I normally would. So kind of fun. <laughs> so the other thing, the other tool you, you're going to need is some some uh, wire cutters to cut off the string ends when you're done. Actually, my tech, he'll just bend them back and forth, which is really funny. He bends them back and forth until they break, which won't happen with the top two strings, but it works on the bottom four. Um, I mean, you could also use like these, I, and I've actually used this to pull out the pins before when I, when I forgot my winder. Because, uh, yeah, like a church or something, if I don't have the winder. I've got, you know, I mean, these are only like a buck or two a piece. You can get them for like a buck at a guitar store. Um, I should have some printed up with like my logo on there or something. 
I don't have a logo, but uh, Jim Dunlop. Um, but basically, um, you uh, you could have one in every case, so that just in case. Huh. All right. Or then there's this, <laughs> which I use on my oud and on my lute because it has friction tuners, and so sometimes they come pop out a little bit, and then they won't. They you know, like you tune it to the note, and then and you gotta tap it in so it stays in. That's what that's for. A simple mallet. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, your high E string tends to break. Yeah. Is it humid where you are, Ab? I'm assuming you're in India. I see. I'm, I must have moved the weird. Okay. Oh, I'm not standing on the guitar thing or on the guitar footrest anymore. Um, I'm assuming. I, th I, forget, I think you're in India, but I'm totally wrong on that. I thought Vito was in Italy forever. Um. Yeah. Oh, you have a pin pull on your capo. Interesting. You know what? I bet you more of my capos have that. I don't even realize they're there. Now that I think about it. Um, because I always wonder, like with the Kaiser capos, they have that weird thing. I wonder if that could be used as a pin puller or a bottle, <laughs> bottle cap remover. <laughs> it looks like that, actually. Um, let's see. I'm going to change my strings for the first time. Oh, okay, Kathy. Yeah, so, okay, well, I can give you some tips right now. Um, one thing you can do is one string at a time. I mean, the nice thing about change, taking them all off and changing them all at once is uh, you can get a chance to clean your fretboard. And so people are always commenting when I do close-ups on my fretboard how filthy my fretboards are because I never do it that way. I always do one string at a time. Uh, I, part, part of the reason is, uh, is because of tension. Um, mainly, you know, tension, like if you take all the strings off, the tension goes off the neck and that might, might hurt the neck. I doubt it, really doubt it, especially if you change the strings right away. I mean, if you don't let it sit there, you know, for a week without the strings, then you won't have an issue. Uh, but part of the other reason, so often, you know, if you t if you take all the strings off, this saddle could fall out. Um, this sometimes these aren't held in very well. These can fall out. So if you change one string at a time, then everything will be held together. Um, with my strats, you know, they've got whammy bars, and if um, uh, if I'm um, uh, doing, uh, you know, if I take all the strings off, then the then the whammy bar, the springs pull the whammy bar all the way back, and then it scratches the top of the guitar or, or makes it hard to line up the strings and th thread them through the back of the guitar. Um, so I, like I said, I usually do one string at a time. It doesn't matter if you go top string or bottom string, um, but just go, you know, like go low E and then the next one, next one, everything like that. That way you can keep tabs on the on the on the pins as well. You know, I find if I have pull out all the strings and take out all the pins and then one drops on the floor, you can't you can't find it. But if you just got one pin stand sitting there, you're probably not going to lose it. Um, and then what you want to do is, uh, you know, do I have a where's it? Oh, you know what? Well, it'd be a weird one to do it on. Um, I've got some new strings for my bass six. I, I should put those on because that thing would be, I've, it's the original strings on there. And they're not very good strings because it was a cheap Squire. Um, so they put crappy strings on. So I got really good strings for the bass six. Um, anyway, you know, we could, we could maybe do that. But I'm no, like, guitar tech. Uh, another reason why I don't take them off, I like to keep this felt underneath, the, this foam underneath the strings. And the reason I do that is... If I do a, if I do a quick chord, you know, I don't have harmonics ringing out. So if I'm doing chord stabs in, in recording, I don't get a lot of overtones. So, um, but yeah, changing strings aren't that hard. Uh, the main thing is to not, you know, you probably want to have, like if you if you go through the you know I always the other thing too is when I before I get started you know once the string is off I I line up the hole so it's lined up straight like this and I just thread you know push the thing in that's the that's the scary part I guess too is the you, you gotta put the string in and then pull it out and push this down at the same time so it is maybe harder than I'm making it sound but um, and that way it doesn't suddenly just because you might leave that much string inside the guitar and then when you go to tighten it goes boom, it goes down really fast and then you've got a lot more winding on here than you need so you kind of need to pull it taut enough so you know that there's the that the um the ball end of the string is right up against the pin okay not way in the guitar because sometimes the pin will hold the string there 
and you think you're you're there. So basically, it's about that much. You know, the length of your headstock about that much string uh, that um, uh, you want to have for the wrap. You know, that's probably too much. Um, I'm trying to think of how much. Yeah, but you, I line the hole up and then I pull it through and then I li wind it and then put my hand like this, keep the tension on the string and then wind it. And I uh, can't really see because I'm, I'm not here. I use my footrest. So it is a process. It's just one you, we, we've done so many times. Um, and then you just kind of flip the process. You got to almost have to be ambidextrous uh, to do it, you know, but... Um, <clears throat> totally could do a video on it, but I'm, I'm sure if I did a video on it, I'd have 4,000 comments about how I'm totally doing it wrong. I just do it to do it, to get my guitar tuned up. Um, there was a reason I was going to tune to standard. What was I? I'm going to tune back to standard and see if I can remember why. Um, okay. Let's see what else. Squirrel. <laughs> Other questions that we have here. Don't forget to thumbs up if you get a chance. Hook. Is that a, a squirrel comment? You us I usually use two nuts beyond the nut when I'm stringing. Oh, I see what you're saying. Use two. Okay, yeah. capos um, I don't have a roller capo I have a shub and I have um, Kaiser capos those are Kaiser and Dunlop capos um, the shubs are great I got the newer shub this is actually classical guitar shubs you can see how flat the radius is on it, as opposed to my electric guitar shub um, and then the G7 I'm actually getting into they gave me a couple of them at the NAMM show and they gave me one at the NAMM show because I saw Beth saw uh, Rick Beato walking by us at the NAMM show. And she goes, hey, it's Rick Beato. I went, oh my God, I got to go talk to Rick Beato. And they said, give him this capo. So they gave me another capo to give to Rick Beato. And I said, hey, the Kaiser guys wanted to give you this. And he went, really? Wow, thanks, man. <laughs> it was so funny because it was like, I was shocked. And then we talked for eh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes or so about, uh, we talked about um, uh, his son, Dylan, who's got a, insane perfect pitch if you've ever watched any of those videos i've never seen anybody with that good a perfect pitch ever and he had it when he was five or six years old uh and he said the secret kind of was to play very avant-garde classical music and jazz when from the age of birth literally from the day he was born to about the age first birthday second birthday um and he uh, said that that's how, you know, he developed perfect pitch. And I said, would he be, I asked him, I said, would Nam like, Nam is like going to a thousand guitar centers at once. And um, he said, uh, no, D Dylan, D D Dylan doesn't get bothered by like cacophony. It doesn't bother him. He's able to tune it out. Um, now you can't learn perfect pitch as an adult. I believe that. I think you can learn it later in life than uh, one years old though. Um, but if you look up Rick Beato's, uh, if you go to his YouTube channel, you can, I think, see his stories on how, how he noticed it and they were vi filming. They've got videos of, of um, Dylan when he's very little and uh, kind of plucking out the piano notes and things like that. It's pretty crazy. Um, but he, uh, um, he, but I know that, like I was talking to my friend uh, Steve Barton, who's the composer for... Um, Apex Legends, which I play all the guitars on. Cheers. He's got perfect pitch. M many composers I know have perfect pitch. He's got perfect pitch, and he um, and I said I'd heard I'd read an article that the instance of perfect pitch in Europe is much higher than perfect pitch in the U.S. And they speculated that the reason was 
is that back in the, we're talking about back in the 60s, 50s and 60s and 70s, not so much anymore. But when they taught, they taught music in school, you took music, you sang. And in Europe, they did what's called a fixed do, which means do is always C. So do, re, mi, fa, so, do, do. Okay. In America, we have a movable do. So whatever one is, if we're in the key of A flat, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, do, do. It, the do and all the rest of the, the notes move with uh, the key. Um, but in Europe, they do do, re, mi, fa, so, la, do, do. So if you want to do the key of D major, you sing re, so do, re, mi. So it's re, mi, fi. I think fi is the sharp fa. So they would actually have sharps for fa and things like that. You know, like they would, you know, do. So mi would be something, you know, re would be something, re, ra. I don't know. I can't, I don't even know them um, because I didn't grow up in Europe. But because they had a fixed do system, um, you could say, you could ask, go up to a kid and say, sing do, and they'd sing a C every time. And so that's a form of perfect pitch. Now, wh whether they could hear, you know, um, uh, you know, this chord here and be able to call out every single note. Well, Dylan could easily. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, if I did this times 50, he could sing you every note. That <laughs> kid is insane. I don't know. It's uh, uh, yeah, relative pitch. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely have relative pitch. So you know, and and I, I definitely have better relative pitch when I have a guitar in my hand than if I don't, which makes sense. But um, yeah, even that. I mean, my son Alex is so much faster at hearing chords than I am. Like when we're playing at church or something, and it's like, is this the five chord or the four chord? He's like, it's the five chord. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so. He's just, he's just got that. But, of course, he grew up listening to a lot of music because he was my kid. So uh, he does not have perfect pitch, though, because I didn't know about the trick where you played avant-garde music for him. If I have grandkids, I might be tempted to do that. <laughs> so see what happens. Um, so uh, don't need that there. Um, but and then we also talked, uh, when I was talking to Rick Beato, we also talked about... Um, um, talked about oud i was telling I, and I was in the middle of in fact yeah i'm doing some more oud music for um the game pat the pathless which i don't know if you've ever played the game uh journey or abzu it's the same company and i didn't play on abzu or pathless um because they were orchestra but I'm, I'm all over this new one which is fun and so i'm playing a lot of loot and oud you saw i had the oud out right no i had the loot out the other day i was playing it well, in fact, I got a reply to that. Somebody asked me what kind of loot that was. Um, and then, um, I, so I was, that was just fresh in my mind. So I, I was talking to Rick Beato about that. I said, do you know about the, the oud that they have in Middle Eastern music? They have notation for 54 notes per octave. And he didn't know that, you know, which is kind of fascinating. And because uh, he's such a good music theory guy. Um, and then we, I also talk, I told him that I worked with Bieber and that I appreciate his, his, uh, willingness not to poo-poo pop music because you know I always say pop music the, the artist is the producer not the not the singer they could put pretty much any singer in there um, if the production is great it's going to be a great sounding record if the singer's good uh, but the reason you do it with famous singers is because uh, that's you're going to sell records uh, someone like Max Martin he's very I think something like 24% of the songs he produces end up in the top five or number one or something like that. It's insane. But I think part of that is because he really um, cherry picks who he's going to work with in the songs. Like if he doesn't like the song, apparently his production costs aren't that much, uh, probably more than I have. But, um, uh, you know, I, I was, I, I'm a little bit shocked. Um, and, uh, the, you know, he doesn't charge a whole lot of production, but he also gets writer's credit so, and publishing. So he's going to make money there. So, yeah. So hopefully, Mar Margaret, you're going to get some, an you're getting lots of answers here because it's a very helpful community. All right. So we're, uh, it's waning because I'm just chitting and chatting. Oh, I mentioned Beaver's name and it just dropped like a rock. <laughs> it's hilarious. When I first started doing this, remember the very first couple of days I would get all the Beaver kids come, come in and ask me all the Bieber questions and we get all sidetracked. 
Okay, Bonnie, go make lunch. I'll have, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, ham and Swiss. I'll be, I'm good with that, so thanks. A little mayo, maybe some uh, Dijon mustard, salt, no salt, um, chips on the side, Diet Coke. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> Search YouTube how to restring a guitar, Taylor guitars, or elixir strings. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's a great idea. Thanks, Bruce. That's a, that's a great one. Okay, so everybody, I'll see you on Monday. Um, who knows? I may log in if I'm writing or doing something. Um, I may log in. I may log in from my phone, too. I could do that at some point. And uh, if I'm going for a walk or whatever, I don't know. We'll figure it out. It's gonna, the weather's going to be pretty nice here. It's going to be low 80s for the next 10 days or so. It was really cold this morning when we went for a walk. So I was like, glad I got my hot coffee. Okay, so everybody do well. Hopefully you'll have fun with these scales. Um, and uh, let me see if I've got the Discord link. Yep, there it is. So if you want to, uh, there's an invite to the Discord site where there's like the paperwork and things like that are all up there. So um, I'm trying to remember. It seemed like there was something that I created that I was supposed to scan and upload and I didn't do it. Um, so, and, all right. All right. Love you too, guys. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.